What's up guys, welcome back to the Bardo Gaming channel. This video is different from the usual. Nothing horror besides the horror of war and glitchy game. That's right, today I want to talk about Fallout 76. See, Fallout 76 is one of my favorite games I ever played. Now, my standard may be low, but it's a series is fun to me. I played ever since launch week. I have basically over a thousand hours if both PlayStation account and PC Steam account ever combined. I have seen the first Flash Night Parade, I was there when Mischief Night was a thing with and crashed due to the mayhem the event has caused. I won a veal victory royale in Fallout 51 Nuclear Winter right before it was taken away from us forever. I was there when Wastelander was delayed not once but twice. So yeah, I have seen my fair share of Appalachia and its evolution, so I can be a trusted source of tips and some information for new players to become in. As the player count grows in Fallout 76 due to the new Fallout TV show that came out, by the way, that is an amazing show, and if you guys haven't watched it yet, I do recommend you guys give it a watch as well. No doubt it's bringing a lot of players back and new players to this game. A lot of them may be confused and unsure what to do in the game. Now, I ain't making a complete guide for Fallout 76. I am just providing tips and information that the game may not explain. If you want someone with guides, I do recommend Rifle Gaming. He was my go-to guide in Fallout 76 when I first started. He's a great handsome man and he has an amazing beard. So if you want more guide or have more questions that this video doesn't solve, he may have an answer just for you. So here is 10 tips or information from Fault Driller Bondro that may help you in the future of Appalachia. One question people will be asking now or later, can I survive without Fallout First? See, Fallout First is a subscription service on which people can pay monthly or yearly. The subscriber get benefits like unlimited scrap storage and ammo storage, a tent which you can use as a free travel point, and monthly free clothing or items from the atomic shop. It is a pretty good service to have, however if you don't have money, yes, you can survive without Fallout First. Right now, even I haven't posted a single video about it yet, I am attempting to do a Fallout Hardcore Challenge. If I can beat the game without dying once and without using Fallout First stuff, you can 100% survive without Fallout First at all. All it requires you to do is be more considerate of what you have and what you don't need. Uh, the top thing you should always consider in honing is steel, lead, screw, and spring as they mostly associated with weapons. Don't hoard too many weapons that you most likely wouldn't use. And if you are a looter bug and you have a friend with follow first, just bum off of him. One of the many issues at the beginning is power armor. You don't get power armor off the rip after leaving Fault 76. You will need to find a power armor chassis. There is a lot of spawn point on the map, you can see a map right here, however I just want to advise that the earliest you can get power armor is level 15, and that is for raider power armor, and that's, you know, it's pretty fucking trash. If you see power armor chassis with a piece that doesn't require a higher level, then you cannot use it until you get to that level. I recommend waiting till like level 25 and there will be a quest in the ash heap that will help you get the plan to build an excavator power armor on which is one of my favorite power armor design from this game and the most useful power armor in the game. This next topic is more information than a tip. Currencies. Holy vault in disguise. There is about 6 type of currency in this game. There is scripts, caps, gold bullion, stamps, atoms, and a nuka ticket. So let's go over each one and let me explain. Script is a currency on which you get a useless piece of legendary item and is given to the script machine. There is a, a script machine at every train station, Nuka Road, White Spring Mall, and the purveyor shop in the Ash Heap. You can trade these scripts with the legendary script purveyor for a random legendary item or for the legendary module to help craft legendary weapons. Caps are just bottle caps, you know, it's, just, it's your usual cap. You can trade these with other players or buy from bo vendor bots at the trade station. It's really not much special. There's it's some plans that require you to use bottle caps to buy. Gold bullion is a currency that was introduced in the Wastelander DLC. I will not explain the lore behind it or why they exist as they spoil the story to Wastelander. I will explain how you gain it, and the way you do gain it is by doing events with the exclamation mark, daily quests from the settler or raider or the responder refugees, and lastly riding shotgun, which is the only unmarked event that does provide treasury notes. These events will give you treasury notes, and with these you can go to one of these places and there is a dispenser that will trade treasury notes for gold bullion. With gold bullion, you can purchase plants from Minerva who is only available at a limited time of week at a certain location on the map, Samuel, Mortimer, and Vicadre. You can also buy gold bullion for cats from Smiley, but that's after you complete the Wastelander questline. 
with gold bullion you should be able to buy the T-65 power armor, Gauss minigun, gauntlets, or other weapons in the blueprints, you will have to take a look for yourself. Stamp is a currency you get from doing expedition, I recommend doing expedition at level 50 as these can be a bit challenging. You can trade these with Giuseppe from the Responder Refuge in Rice Spring. You can get the amazing Auto Axe from here or the Pit Power Armor plants. Atom is just a micro section part of the game which you can spend at the Atom Shop. You can get these from paying with real money, Fallout First, Challenges, and Season. Most stuff in the shop is just comedic besides a consumable which doesn't give you an advantage over anyone. Nuka Ticket, yes, this is a currency, but it's only used in one place, which is Nuka World on Tour. You gain these tickets from doing events from Nuka World on Tour or playing the arcade games. You can spend these tickets on a computer nearby and buy plans and a squirt gun. You can modify the squirt gun to a Nuka Quantum squirt gun and cause it due to a big explosion. Lead. Lead is needed for practically every type of ammo in this game besides some energy weapon. You will constantly need lead, so I recommend the lead run. There is a specific mine in the cranberry bog which is called the lucky hole mine. In there there's a bunch of cultists but on the walls there is lead ore deposit. With the excavator power armor you will be able to get a lot of lead ores from this mine and with acid you can be able to craft a lot of lead scrap. If you are ever in a team with a high level and you see their health is mostly red that means that they are very dirty and they couldn't afford a rat away. So if you see them go down, make sure to equip Rat Sponge when you revive them, so you can help clean them. They will definitely say thank you to you after you help them clean them from the rat that contaminated their body. Enough for reals, please don't do that. They are most likely bloody build. See, this is a build in which the less health you have, the more damage you do. This tend to be the most powerful build in Fallout 76 due to how many perks with having low health. So if you ever see a player with their health mostly irradiated, then it's normal and they're not needing help. They're just compensating for something that they don't have. Do you want to commit world crime like they did in the Clone Wars? Then launch a nuke. How you may ask? See, to start such method, you need to do the Enclave Faction mission. To start these mission, you need to go to this bunker here and follow the mission from there. It is a very difficult questline and I recommend being at least level 40 to start such. However, completing this questline, this is also the way you can get the X01 power armor plans. In the Enclave base, there is a computer that have the X01 power armor plan for free. So go out there and start launching some nukes and wear that X01 power armor suit. Launching nuke is important as only some bosses spawn due to nuking specific part of the map and getting nuke flora which is required for crafting some certain modification for power armor like calibrated shock. As well to make stable nuke flora, you need three more items. You need to get, you need to have high radiation fluid glowing mass and hardened mass each of these items are only obtained by killing enemies in the nuke zone there are random chances of being one of them so happy hunting you ever heard a howl so loud that it causes you to wet yourself and run away that's not the howl that's the fear effect certain creatures have these fear shout that causes the player to run away from them making you vulnerable for a couple of seconds or worse make you run into a drill that's covered in acid no 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 Best way to combat against it is with Liquid Courage. This drink will give you a few extra hair on your chest and make you stand your ground against these howls. However, the only way to get Liquid Courage is by crafting it or buying it from another player. To get the plan, you need to complete a daily option mission to at least get a chance for it to drop. Once the plan is learned, you need to go to a brewing station and craft it. It requires 3 corn, 3 boiled water, 3 razor grain, and a Wendigo Colossus nut sacks, and woods. You can make one of them and ferment it. This is a handy drink, especially if you are a melee build and is going up against the Blue Devil or the Wendigo Colossus. However, you will need a brewing station. Do you ever have the fantasy of running your own illegal business of making moonshine? Now you can! There is a brewing station on which you can make and ferment alcohol. To unlock this, you need to start a quest line for such. You need to find this poster to start this quest and then eventually you get a plan to make a brewing station and fermenting station at your home. Keep in mind though, you will need to unlock the recipe for other beverages so make sure you return to this robot, Biv, daily to get a chance on getting a new drink recipe. Adhesive is one of those junk you will never have enough of or run out eventually. There is a method on which you can make adhesive whenever you want. 
with just corn, take those mute fruit and, and purified water, you can make vegetable starch at a cooking station. Then when you scrap the starch, it becomes adhesive, which is pretty useful and you wouldn't have to worry much about running out of adhesive if needed more. And if you can, I recommend on getting the turbo fertilizer, which can be purchased for gold bullion by Samuel. With these grenades, you can make your crop instantly regrow for more adhesive. And with the green thumb perk, you can make a lot of adhesive within seconds. And this last part is not a tip but some word. Fallout 76, at broken and buggy it can be seen sometimes, of course Bethesda was held accountable due to its release and Bethesda seemed to have learned from such mistake. Well, sorta. However, Fallout 76 has gotten better over the years since release. When the game and many people thought it surely would die and be forgotten, it wasn't due to the community and the constant update that made the game get better. So go ahead and give this game a try. Get, explore the world, do the quest line, meet and talk to new people, build yourself a camp, kill and slay mutants and any other monster out there. Explore your build and play how you want to play. Bring a friend along, see the awesome community that surrounds this game, and maybe you get to see why Fallout 76 is now a good game. As well, if you see me in the wasteland, can say hi. I would like to see and meet you. If you have questions for me or need assistance, I can gladly be able to help if I can. So I do hope I get to see you in the wasteland. I do also hope these tip and information help you understand the game a bit more. I do recommend watching Flyful Gaming. He has a lot of cool videos on his channel. Also, if you are interested in the lore of Fallout 76 and don't want to be bothered looking for hollow tapes or notes from the release, I recommend watching Ox. He is great at explaining lore. Anyways. I do hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you like what you saw, please leave a like and comment down below. If you want to stay updated on when I do upload, please consider hitting the subscribe button as it does support the channel. Anyways, I hope you guys all have a good day. Peace out. I would like to also announce that I will be live streaming Fallout 76 on Twitch. I will be doing a FNAF Inspired Pizzeria in the Wasteland and do some nukes and challenges. So if you don't want to miss that and hang out with me in chat, head over to my Twitch and follow me there. I most likely will be streaming on Saturday, April 20th or Sunday, April 21st. So stay tuned.